These are seven things that I love about the new Note Air 2 Plus. The fact that you can map out everything and you can customize the way this device works for you. It's a device that you can use for work or play and you can switch between those uses. It's very versatile. And because it's Android, it has really familiar things like the Recents button and the Home button. And it allows you to access those apps that you already use. Three improvements of the Note Air 2 Plus over the Note Air 2 is the bigger battery life. Not that that was a problem before really. It's got that more pro looking color and I for one love that green compared to the brash blue. And there are magnets all over this so that it fits in this really sleek case instead of having to be clipped in. I'm gonna switch now to this view and show you seven things that I love about this. First up, it's the Google Play without having to faff around and do the Google Play Protect certification. It just comes pre-installed, sign in, and you're ready to go. You've got access to all of those apps that you could possibly use. Absolute winner. Next is Trello. Yeah, Trello. So Trello for me is where I keep all of my scripts. And this means that I can get this access to this on a web browser, on my computer that I'm looking at right now for the notes for this one. And I can do this on my phone. So for instance, I recorded something voice recognition on my phone earlier on today. Where did I put it? And now on this device, I can go through and I can read and edit and think about any changes that I want to make. It's brilliant, that's seamless. But I mean, really the point about that is, is that it can integrate with any apps that you already use. For instance, Google Drive. And I use Google Drive a lot for all of my writing, all of my work, all of my school things, and um, it's all there, look. And actually this is the third one. Google Docs is another thing that I absolutely love about this platform. Just because it is my go-to place to note down any thoughts on my phone as I go. So now it could be my go-to place on this device as well. So ideas that come to me that I scribble down, I can reread them. I can go ahead and edit them on this device. And before I think they've improved the character recognition. So here we go, this document here, the OCR input, which is built into the Now this is much more accurate than using, oh no, let me down with that last one. This is much more accurate than using the character recognition which is in the notes app. Not that I'm sure there's any different kind of software that it's doing, but it struggles to work out which line you've written on for some reason. It muddles the lines and the orders of words. So if they can get it right in the notes app, that would be amazing, but they've certainly improved it. So the next thing, this is number five, is the article mode in the Neo Reader. So although this looks kind of okay, what would be nicer is if I could have it portrait, displaying this side, then that side, and not have to kind of zoom in and zoom out. If I just go ahead and rotate it again. In the menu here. And I can tell it which parts I want to be the kind of screens. So I want to see this left-hand side and this right-hand side. So let's have a look. So I want this on here and I want it to go this side, left side, right side, which is what it is doing already. But I can change that down here in the direction. Go okay. And now that's left-hand side. Go next page or I can swipe. Now I've very quickly just formatted this such that it's much more easily readable here on the Neo Reader. Neo Reader is really good. I've talked about the handwriting input, which is improved, but the other thing they have on here is microphones and therefore you can do voice recognition. So how good and how accurate is the voice recognition? 
pretty good. It's also managed to format my text there. And any times it doesn't get my writing accurately, it's not very difficult for me to actually change that. Nice, let's compare that to the Google board. I know the microphone is just there, so it's not very well optimized. I thought it looked better on the original Note Air 2. Full stop. Not as accurate, right? Just not as accurate. I haven't changed the way that I'm speaking. It's just not as accurate. So yeah, well impressed, well done books. And number seven, OneNote has improved once more. It's getting closer to being a full OneNote experience. It does have this weird square. Oh, that does work now. <laughs> Previously, maybe it was that view I had. This bit wasn't working, this area wasn't working, but now it seems to be working just fine. Seems like OneNote is getting there. Last time I did this, it was terrible for palm recognition. Now it seems like it's just about there. The contrast is better here at the top as well. They've worked hard to make this usable because this is the app that's probably the most requested here on the books. It isn't going to replace their notes app though for sheer usability in terms of the writing feel and the pen options. At the risk of sounding a little bit like a fanboy, I'm loving this right now. Well done to books. I think you might have cracked it here. I've really enjoyed using this device so far. It's early doors, but the few things they've improved, especially about the software interface. So I really love the global handwriting input. That's something that I really thought it needed. And the fact that it has microphones on it and you can therefore do voice recognition. I think I might have missed that earlier on because I was using the Gboard, which you know, on Android, the Gboard is my favorite way to do text input. And you know, what's interesting is I think this might have become a favorite for writers. And previously that spot has been occupied by the Superno A5X and the Kobo. So it's interesting for many writers, I think they'll prefer this now based on those upgrades. I think I might have to redo my top five e-ink tablet video coming soon. And I'm gonna do that more in depth this time as well. The more I use this, the more I think that full Android is the way to go. And books are committed to improving the experience in each update. Other companies might have a little bit of catching up to do. A complaint that other reviewers have made, and it's a valid one, is that whilst it's okay for books to release a new device every five months, you should be aware that people are looking to use this device for a lifespan of about two to three years before even thinking about replacing it. And so it's best to give them the best experience for that entire period and not just to put the software updates on the very latest model, but to keep updating in the exact same way all of your whole lineup. It does seem that having used this next to the Note Air 2, the original one, it does seem that this has got a few extra upgrades that that didn't get. And well, the question then is, do you need to upgrade from the Note Air 2 to the Note Air 2 Plus? And I think that's a question for a full comparison video. And I'll answer that having tested it for a good few weeks. Right now though, the conclusion is that this is a very good iteration in the Note Air series. Up here for my full books playlist, to find out about all the other devices. And here, if you'd like to see the Note Air 2 compared to other devices.